Everybody out there in Chicago's uh, WLUW listening land, it's uh, we're coming back at you with live from the heartland. Uh, we're doing it from our stay-at-home homes in Rogers Park. We're living the life of quarantine in isolation. It's a way different deal. Uh, Liola is currently uh, playing autoplay, so we haven't been able to bring you our live show on every Saturday morning. I'm here with Katie Hogan and Tom Clark. Uh, they got themselves with a nice picture. We can't figure out how to get beyond my baby picture, but good morning to you guys, and how are you? <laughs> oh, Michael, Michael. Oh, Michael, <laughs> you technological genius, you. Believe us, people, when we, when we rehearsed this, Michael was live. But at least you can read from the script without looking, you know, funny doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see you, Katie. It's great nice to, to see your baby you. picture, Michael. Yes. yes. Why don't you get us rolling here with Banter of the Week? Well, um, one of the things that we were talking about uh, when we were planning our show uh, a week or so ago was how to, how to uh, verify what we're hearing. Um, this started because, of course, the briefings by the um, imposter in chief um, are so without veracity and so misinforming of people um, that you know, they'd have to correct it a couple hours later. He'd come back with a different thing the next day. So, you know, one of the things we were putting together was a list of where we go for uh, truth. And, you know, it, it covers the normal New York Times, uh, Washington Post, Guardian, um, our own local papers. Sometimes uh, the, I check out Politico. I check out Public Square. I think NPR and uh, WBEZ have both been pretty excellent on this for the last three weeks or two a month. And of course, everything has to be verified by Snopes. Um, mostly um, whatever comes out of Trump's mouth needs to be checked with Snopes. Um, how about, what are your uh, reactions to, you know, what you're hearing, what this, what this incredible moment gives us in terms of information or not? Well, I find the least valuable information is the daily briefing out of Washington. The most important is the daily briefing out of Springfield with often uh, Mayor Lori Lightfoot coming in right behind that or right in front of it. Our local leaders have been far more uh, to task and, and we'll talk about it a little bit more, but there's other news going on. Like uh, uh, we have uh, other policy things going on um, behind the scenes. Um, the mileage standards are being rolled back, which is another Obama initiative to try to clean up our climate in the air that I guess we don't have to have clean cars as much because we don't have to save, you know, the planet as much when we're all dying from a virus or something. Um, by the way, Native tribes uh, uh, got a big victory in court uh, stalling the Keystone Pipeline. Um, I'm not sure we need more fracked oil with all the oil prices down. So. That's a really interesting development. Um, that was a, I thought how those judge, red, that was a judge who made that decision. Just yeah. one, one more thing on the Keystone Pipeline. There is an article, I think, in the New York Times today talking about how big oil is taking this opportunity to try to ram this through when we can't turn out 30,000 demonstrators in a, at any time around that issue. Uh, Point. Other places, another red state has succumbed to true science over uh, over Trump as the Florida governor uh, finally issued a stay-at-home order. A number of other red states remain free and open. Uh, there is a uh, real interesting article in the New York Times again today talking about how um, <clears throat> the governor of Tennessee has overridden the local Nashville mayor on the question of uh, staying in place and the governor of 
Kentucky has told people in Kentucky not to go into Tennessee. So uh, hopefully uh, all these red states will get in line pretty but soon. That, that, is, uh, that is simply appalling. I mean, that is yeah. simply appalling that, that the states are, uh, not only are they saying don't go into your neighboring state, but they're, they're also um, bidding. There's a bidding war for the life-saving equipment that all of the healthcare people have to, I mean, if we had leadership in DC, there would have been a, a, a smooth, you know, laying forth of of where need the needs were and how they were going to be met. Oh my God! Yeah, like uh, we're supposed to wear now. Everyone's saying around the world wear face masks, and Trump says, "Well, it's up to you." And I'm not going to wear one. It's unbelievable. Please let him not wear one everywhere he goes, and let him go everywhere. Um, let him show the rest of us just how dumb a despot he is. I, I think there are a lot of things that are going to, uh, we're going to talk about more in weeks to come, that this moment, this incredible moment is also an opportunity to look at um, possibly finally getting comprehensive health care for all in this country. Um, the way uh, we were unprepared for this is appalling. It's embarrassing for those of us who are old enough to remember what um, the notion of um, American exceptionalism was based on, uh, that is gone, babies. That is gone. Uh, on. Not only do we uh, need the health care, we need uh, infrastructure attention from one end of the country to the other. Um, we keep getting uh, threats by the current occupant on the United States Postal Service. Please don't let that go away. And, and hey, how about this for an idea? Let's start reinvesting in Amtrak so that we can travel Overland from sea to shining sea. You think that'll be in the infrastructure bill? I, I would love it to be, Tom. I would love it to be. Um, okay, so uh, let me just share some bad news. Is that uh, the virus is spreading rapidly in uh, literally captive communities from lockdown senior centers to jail detainees to asylum seekers in the border, border camps. Uh, and uh, as Katie alluded to around health care, this week Trump uh, announced they will not reopen the Affordable Care Act, which leaves an awful lot of people in danger's way. Um, and um, just rough out there. It is indeed. You know, something else that happened this past week is that we lost um, uh, a wonderful performer, even as we await news on the John Prines of the world and Gordon Quinn's. Here's a little piece from Bill Withers. Ain't no sunshine when you're gone. And this house just ain't no home. Anytime she goes away. I know, 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 But ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. We're back. We are back. <laughs> um, that was that was fun. A little musical uh, interlude there. Um, okay. One of the things that's become really clear, Katie, is the valuable local leadership we've had. Yep. Yep. Right from the get, right? I mean, uh, Pritzker stepped right up. Yeah, right he after, has. Right after Cuomo, who has a really, really, uh, really rough situation on his hands with New York. But, I mean, as of today, what do we have? We have 10,000 cases in the state of Illinois. And we've had uh, almost 250 deaths. In the last two days, they have exponentially increased. So we are coming into that place where everybody's got to be serious and ha hang in there and hunker down. And I think that Lori Lightfoot memes are hysterical. Don't you? I like her <laughs> memes. I like, she's a hell of a guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she needs to do a little bit of work on that. 
Um, <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I've, I've been collecting them because they're brilliant and she seems to love them and they're getting the point across more importantly. Yeah. Imagine if the showman flim flam artist had even attempted something like this to communicate public health news to the public. I mean, it would be a great way for some of his red state supporters to get the news, but uh, you know, he can't fathom stuff like that. Well, She's been really sharp, petulant as she can be at times. Um, uh -huh. Been able to show a humorous side when necessary in this crisis. Well, I'm really glad that they're, they've uh, finally gotten to the point where everybody should be wearing masks. I've, I've been wearing masks since this started, mostly because I don't know if I have it. I got to protect others from me, you know. Um, but I, I do love the fact that Rogers Park has put together the Rogers Park mutual aid effort um, called Rogers Park Community. Um, Rogers Park Community Response. Response team. Response team. RPCRT yeah. dot org. Yeah, dot org. Look it up. There's a number there. There's a lot of help for getting food delivered to your back door for giving you rides. Uh, there's a slew of volunteers signed up to do it. Uh, I signed up myself and then a few days after realized, wow, I might have to call on this service. <laughs> I might have to have my, my uh, food delivered to me because Morris Market is way too small, way too tight. Well, here in the neighborhood, you know, we've gone from jazz and small plates to making masks over at the uh, <laughs> piano. We're She's the new owner, the guy, this guy's there, yeah. Chad, has been uh, making ass, masks for area health care workers. Uh, one, of, one of many local business responses to the, the pandemic. And uh, I encourage you as a former restaurant owner to at this time do as much curbside pickup as you can. I cannot imagine what it's like for all these restaurants not being able to be open. Oh. Uh, I, in a lot of ways, as much as I miss being the uh the owner and boss on the corner of the heartland cafe along with you katie it would have been a, a, a pretty uh dire situation totally totally dire yes we're, we're trying to order at least twice a week from local um restaurants good uh, keep those workers going and, um, and but, but then we have to be careful about them and how many times we we pull them out to deliver us food i mean it it's a pretty amazing example of how privilege plays out in our society going on right now the folks who we don't think deserve 15 bucks an hour are keeping our society going it's it's and, just astonishing um, yeah so there's so, one more thing we can all do wash our hands put your face mask on where's my face wash mask? your hands wash your hands put your face mask now, you ain't got no time to wait. That Corona could get you. That Corona could get you. Put your face mask on now. Well, oh, Tom, you're a good face watcher. I could tell. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. What? Tom's been washing his hands the whole time. Oh, there's Katie. There's Katie with a mask on. I'm washing my hands, although all you can see is my baby picture. I'm a little concerned about the water usage, okay? That's what does that mean? Something. I have a mean feeling. driving up the bill? No, well, I live in a co-op apartment building, and our monthlies are uh, include paying for the water. Well, guess what? With everybody staying at home and washing their hands 20 times a day for the last three weeks, I assume we're going to have a very big water bill. Anyway. Uh, let's let's just report on how we've uh, how we've coped, the three of us. Let's do our own little check in, um, okay. and what, what y'all are doing. I, both Michael and Tom have families with them, so that gives you some other opportunities and some risks, I assume. Well, Tom, tell us what you've been doing. Yeah. Well, we do have a grandson who's coming back and forth between his dad in Jefferson Park and our house in Rogers Park. But that's about our only public exposure other than drive-by food pickups. Um, we're having daily walks. Often that's with the grandson on a scooter, getting lots of energy out. And um, I'm cooking a lot, two or three meals a day now. Um, I miss shopping, which I have other members of the household doing. They, they don't want me leaving the house. We've talked about self-isolation. I've tried to say that to you for years, Tom. I know. Well, <laughs> you finally succeeded. 
I ain't going out except for my daily walk. Um, um, we have this wonderful neighbor who does fresh fish delivery. So we're doubling up on that every week. And uh, I'm teaching the grandson how to cook. He's done crescent roll desserts. And he actually invented a taco spaghetti burger that we made together the other night. Oh, quite I can't wait. Interesting, <laughs> quite an interesting recipe. But how about you, Katie? Spaghetti burger. Uh, for me, it's, um, I'm so glad I have my little house here. I'm very uh, grateful that, that, I, that I find myself here for this particular um, challenge. Um, I did crack out my guitar. I can't tell you how many years it's been. Um, it's my brother's, my late brother's guitar, metal strings, and I immediately popped the G string. Okay. Oh. Oh. Trying to uh, tune it up. So I'm going to have to get a replacement from my. Maybe Kidding has some extra strings, Michael. And uh, have them here. And I have played the keyboard uh, a couple times. And. Um, and I'm taking a sketchbook class online uh, or via Facebook, strangely enough. The Art Institute teacher decided she would uh, take us on anyway. So that's, that's a wonderful respite. And also, I, I, uh, I've had reading group on Zoom last Sunday. We had our reading group. And uh, t later today, I'm going to have a family Zoom session where we all visit each other. Nice. I would like to get back into my walks. The walks disappeared after the lakefront closed, but that's that's no excuse. I mean, I too have had uh, uh, less walking since they closed the lakefront, and I did go over by a day. And the older woman's wife did let me know, Michael, it's all the way up here. I thought originally it was just south of Ardmore, uh, so have to change the walking. I would uh, kind of make up your own rule on that, Michael, as usual. Yes. And um, I do have two of my sons, Katie and Hal, are both here. They don't want me going out, so I only sometimes will drive while they have to go do something. Um, uh, I, uh, you know, it's, uh, I look through a lot of photographs. I got, I'm working on another book. Um, I got a little routine with my five pound dumbbells of dancing along to uh, Otis Redding and others. Uh, that's all with fun. dumbbells. Yeah, kind of doing it's curls. Dangerous. and Yeah, it's fun. Try it out. You got those little ones. And yeah, um, dumbbells, yes. we've had some great meals. Uh, son Kadian has decided that besides doing music with Twin Peaks, he's going to do a whole bunch of cooking. And we've had roast chicken galore with all kind of delicious beet salad, etc. Um, the food front is good. A lot of steel cut oats, a lot of eggs, a lot of salads, a lot of chicken, and a little. Okay, pork. okay. Enough with the food. Jeez, Michael, you're making me hungry. All right. So let me just say, I feel good, but I'm uh, I'm real concerned about others. In uh, uh, no stir crazy here. There's plenty to do. I wish I could do more to help other people. Although, as my daughter Casey Blue pointed out, that uh, staying in place is helping, and. Um, so that's a small sure. contribution. Uh, I believe that we really have an opportunity to change things from healthcare to relationship between workers and owners, that we have to be getting ready for a lot of political work in the days to come. So with that said, uh, we're moving forward to a more equitable and a better place and watch this space for more information and news to come. And we encourage you all to do good in the world because the world, the world needs, needs all the good that we, we do. do. All, all power, power to, to the, the people. people. Open up. Fill our world, baby. Ah, that's the Twin Peaks plan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, then. 
Nice talking with you guys. Keep stopping the videos. Okay?